what is your big why? Go find the generosity that you really want to focus on. And maybe it's for yourself. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's something bigger than yourself. It's probably going to be something bigger than yourself. And when you're focusing on that, then it's so much easier for you to be driven, for you to get more income, and for you to create uh, just so much more for your life and, and make it worth something, right? So house hacking is huge. You know, you can rent out part-time when you're traveling and you're going around making those deals uh, happen or just traveling for fun. And you can rent those out, rent your, your home out then, rent it out full time. Uh, and then the benefit of that is you have someone paying your mortgage for you, which puts equity in your pocket. So once you get to a certain amount, you get to 40% paid off of your mortgage, then you refinance, your home has gone up in value, hopefully, if you bought right, the, the buy is absolutely the best way to invest the best is you have to get the good purchase price. Uh, but as soon as you get to 40%, you know, you could go and finance, take out that 20% that you paid off from your house hack where your tenant was paying off your mortgage. You take that 20% and then you can actually go and invest in your next property that cash flows. The cash flow is the difference in your mortgage, uh, your income from the property minus your mortgage, minus all of your expenses. And, you know, a base hit in real estate would be like a hundred to $200 a month. You could get a home run though, that could maybe cash flow you seven to a thousand dollars a month. And you only have to do that so many times before you get to financial independence. And once you get to freedom, that's you have everything paid off for yourself and you have actual savings as well, then that's when you're, you're really off to the races because you can continue to do that process, right? So you can continue to refinance your homes uh, as you have more of them, you have more tenants paying your mortgage, you have more tenants putting equity into your properties, investing for you. And then you get to refinance and go look for more homes and more homes and more homes. And where does it stop? Well, it depends on how big your why is. Well, and how, and then I think there's also becomes what kind of structures do you have into play in place to manage all of that too? Cause yep. then if you have a hundred homes, you're probably going to have, well, yeah, exactly. How big is your why? Anything, you can figure anything out. I will never yeah. forget when I was in my twenties, basically I had bought my second house and um, it was a condo, it was a just strictly investment property. And it wasn't making a ton of money. I think we were at like three or $400 a month positive, but it was 2013. It was a great time to buy. Um, everything was like pretty depressed. And I literally, my ex-husband and I drained our entire bank account, which I don't actually recommend, but I was 24 and like, who cares? We, I think we had like $70 left when everything was paid and we're like waiting for our like our next paychecks or whatever but anyway so I have two people that were like in that like one one of the CEOs was such an asshole he came up and he was like what are you building your empire and I was like yeah I am like it was like I was but at the time like he was just being such a jerk and then the, then the second person that came up was this wonderful person that I had was an engineer this like female engineer that um I had become friends with just but I didn't even know. And she said, good job. She goes, I have 15 homes. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And I had no idea. And she's like, I don't need to work. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And she's like, good job. Keep going. And I thought, man, this is the difference because I guarantee that she has a higher net worth than the CEO of the company guaranteed. Like no, like there is absolute, cause I know she's in San Diego, like coastal San Diego area. I was like, this is interesting because you're an engineer at a company and the CEO is making probably three X of your salary. And yet you are definitely, definitely uh, have a higher net worth than him and don't have to work. She said, I never have to work again. I'm like, wow. Okay. So that was a huge, huge lesson for me early on, you know, was, and she was also so like encouraging too. So I had one person that was kind of like, what do you, you know, a little, like, I didn't know at the time I'm like, that was such an asshole thing to say, you know, he's kind of making fun of me. Um, for buying real estate, which why would you make fun of me? And then the other person was like, go girl, go. And this is what is possible too, which also kind of a good reminder that like, there are going to be people that are going to shit on your dreams and who the fuck cares? It's you. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's right? a cool way like, to put it, like, right? Like, yeah. and, and, and that's the thing Like we talked about earlier. I'm not going to be as helpful in helping you invest if you're not making enough but you can outwork people who make way more than you by having a lower margin and just like 
knowing, okay, I'm in abundance mindset, but I still have a, a, a grasp of that scarcity mindset. And I know what my wall is, right? So we're thinking like big why, like that's the sun, that's where I want to get to. But we also want to know like, where is your floor? Like, can you actually push yourself off and make yourself feel like you're against the wall all the time? So you're always like fighting to get there while also doing your breath work, meditating, like keeping your, your nervous system in check, but getting to that point where you are just always hungry. You're always driven. You know, I, I intentionally keep my uh, checking account to three to six months just so that all of my money is in investments. And I always have pressure on me to be moving forward and always look at my return. I always hold every investment I make to an accountability of a, a specific return. So that's my next step to creating financial freedom through real estate is have an idea of where you want to be. Where's your blueprint? What do you need in order to get there and then work backwards? So mm -hmm. I am very about structure. 2021 was all about balance for me. Uh, you know, balancing out my feminine and my masculine energies. It was all masculine for a long time, just doing the adult thing, creating all the structures. Last year was all about like that trauma work and worthiness, right? Like you have to mm -hmm. know that you're worthy of wealth. You have to start there. Do, do you actually feel within yourself that you could retire by 40, 50, 60? If you give yourself 10 years to retire, it's going to take yourself 10 years to retire. If you give yourself 40 years to retire, it's going to take you that long. It's the same as if you say, I'm going to sell my, I'm going to clean my house in five hours. You're going to clean it five hours. If you give yourself five days, it's going to take you five days. If you never give yourself a time that you're going to actually clean it, it never gets done. So <laughs> that's why you have to set goals and not just ideas. You have to create this wealth mindset where you are worthy of it. You do it, you balance it out. And it's not all about structure. You have to make sure that you're having fun as well. And that's what I would recommend more than anything is create that structure where you know what your dream life is. I know that if I had $250,000 of annual income, I would have a Tesla Model X. I would have a $2 million property in Santa Barbara, fully cash flowed, and everything would take care of itself. Plus, it would fund my business every year at the current level. So uh, that's what I am trying to do, right? So like, what does it do? Uh, you have to backtrack from there. $20,000 a month in passive income is where you have to start. How do you get there? Well, you need how many properties? If it's a, if it's a home run, you have 20 properties that are all cash flowing a thousand dollars a month. That's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what's your Absolutely. big why and what's your wall? I love that so much. I've also found that like, I'm way more motivated to make money when there is an investment that I'm excited about, or that I'm like, like, it's really hard to just make money if I'm like, oh, this is just to pay bills, you know, like, that's not really that fun. You're like, okay, like, what's the celebration about it? I also am very motivated. I love luxury. I love fancy things. So I'm also really motivated by treating myself in certain ways. So I have to have motivation. It's way easier to get excited about a goal. If you actually have a goal or if there's a reason behind it, or if it's like, I want to save a hundred thousand dollars for a down payment on a house or 200,000, or like, if you have that kind of fire behind you, I find it to be way easier to bring that into reality and to make that a reality. Cause it's like, you have that excitement towards it. And I feel like we could do a whole podcast on structure because you're like, so like, um, Maybe we can, we'll do that on the next, we'll one. do that. That'll be like next, our next podcast will be on structure because you I have so like, many structures like, that I can make you vomit, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I was like thinking about it because like Alex is like from this hour to this hour, I'm like book writing and this to this, I'm like this. And I'm like, for me, I'm like, okay, this five hour block is like all of, you know, getting all my styling done or whatever. Um, but I, I really have a lot of respect for that. So actually we're, we're going to table that. We'll come back to that one. The next thing I want to talk about is the future of real estate. So you love tech. And I think that's, um, I always said that like my, like my Venn diagram was people, fashion and technology. Like those were kind of like all of the, the things that I love. I should put real estate in there somewhere. I don't know where it goes yet, but I would love to know um, what you think is the future of real estate and how we can position ourselves to be ready for it and to not only be ready for it, but create it. Mm, that's my favorite thing to think about. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite thing to think about. 
Uh, you know, you know me so well, Lisa. Well, the real estate market is the largest asset class in the world. Uh, wars are fought over territory and land. Pretty much everything is like the, the biggest thing that everyone's always looking for is land, uh, safety, territory. That's why our military budget's so big. That's why, well, everything is so big. That's why we have a huge transportation system. That's why we have everything. I mean, the world's a huge place and the game of the world, if you're in it, is to go and get land. And that's where we are right now. Uh, people love the idea of property and property has, has just been our main focus. Uh, $270 trillion of all of the assets in the world are, is real estate. And, and that's where wow. we've been focusing for so, so long. To put it into perspective, all the gold in the world is $10 trillion. To buy all the gold in the world is $10 trillion. So $270 trillion is real estate. And right now, we still go through the government to get uh, everything approved in order to transact property. And that started when the government owned all the property and then started selling it to uh, landowners in the past. And we go through a title process that's on paper. My clients still go into the title and escrow office in order to close and sign closing documents. There's um, you know, construction and renovation. There's title and escrow lending, marketing services. These are all under an umbrella of real estate. And these are all services that, well, it all required what I think is antiquated processes in order to actually make the real estate industry flow. And paper. in the future, so much paper, 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 so we're, much we're, paper we're, and like physical are, things like, like thumbprints. Like, I just remember like, why am I giving you my thumbprint right now? As I'm like, you know. It makes no sense. It, uh, it, it makes sense because we have. Uh, an older industry that's been around forever. And we have a lot of players that have been in the industry who have been keeping it the same way because it's very reliable, except now it's not as reliable because now there is, are billions of dollars in fraud uh, going on in actions. That's a huge cyber attack uh, issue that's going on right now. Clients can get their routing numbers uh, replaced. If someone knows that you're transacting, then they can intercept an email, hack an email server, and then take your information. Wow. And, and these are just things that are happening right now. So uh, really where I see us going is a more digitized process where things are automated, well, where you don't have to worry about uh, getting a packet in the mail in order to sign off on title documents, right? Like it's just already pulled for you. You get it digitally. Um, we have this whole industry. I mean, every industry has been affected by the internet and real estate mm -hmm. to a degree, like the marketing is very different. We have DocuSign now, but DocuSign's like been around for what, less than 10 years. And we're just now doing digital signatures and e-signatures. Well, when we go a step further, we don't just have automatic signatures. Now we have automatic process where the whole transaction it, and all that process is actually online. And when I say online, I mean, we have uh, right now, it's, it's all centralized. It's all through the governments, all through title and escrow. But what if you could do peer to peer transactions without a middleman? Wow. That is uh, essentially what we're seeing is the advent of a safe uh, SHA-256 is like the highest encryption you could possibly have. If you had three sons, if you had a computer size of three sons, you couldn't crack uh, that encryption level. And that wow. is gonna protect us from $2 billion in lost uh, funds from the, the market. The buyers and sellers have lost $2 billion in the last, year, in the last two years actually from fraud. So we need a higher encryption system and we need the blockchain. And the blockchain is uh, something that I'm obsessed with because I came from Crypto, big data. Here we, come. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's a more simplified world to me where we can be in a place and a, a place where we have a ledger that's public that, you know, that's the big thing. Like, all the information for all the real estate in the world is public. You can access that information because it's through the government. Well, what if it was through a ledger where everyone could read and you could give people a whitelist access to actually look at all the reports that have ever been done on a property, 
all the title records that have ever written on our property, all the permits, everything. And you don't have to go to the county uh, office in order to get everything and have them pull up paper or print something out for you.